Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church on this most central and joyful of festival occasions for the Christian Church, Easter Day. We are delighted to welcome all of you into our church, whether you're here in the nave, over at the table, or even in one of our uh, rooms outside. It's an honor to worship with you. If you uh, are new here, we would especially love to welcome you. Please fill out a visit card, and we'd love to give you a call later on in the week. Our service continues with prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple had run Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Easter to you. March 31st. Um, little fun factoid. Less than 25% of our Easter's occur in March. Most of them occur in uh, April. But here we are March 31st. Well, there was another Sunday, March 31st, 1935. It was just another day in East Los Angeles. People went about their day as they did any other Sunday in the spring. But it wasn't just any other day for some people. And after I tell you what happened, possibly it was not an ordinary day for you either. You see, the youngest of three children, born to Jewish immigrants to the United States, entered the world. Herb Alpert. For the uninformed and uninitiated, of which there may be a few out there, Herb Alpert is an American trumpeter who led the band Herb Alpert in the Tijuana Brass during the 1960s, so it's only fitting that we have some brass, our own version of the brass this morning. Now, Alpert recorded 28 albums that all landed on the Billboard 200. Five of those albums became number one albums. A lot could be said about his genius. He started his own record label, A&M, and I still get chills when I hear The Lonely Bull. Oh, it's so good. Or any song off the wonderfully titled album, you know it, Whipped Cream and Other Delights. <laughs> Amazing. That album, incidentally, 
was the number one album in 1966, outselling The Beatles, Frank Sinatra, and The Rolling Stones. Herb Albert's no slouch. But in actuality, March the 31st, 1935, it's a pretty ordinary day. Just another day. Like a million other mornings, just the same. Dawn breaks upon the Sea of Galilee and Capernaum, across Tiberias, the fishermen gathering for their work. Dawn breaking, of course, down in Judea and Jerusalem. Men and women stir from their slumber, thoughts of the Passover festivals and the coming day. Just another day, like a million other mornings, just the same. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. No, this was not just any other day. That day's implications were still unknown to most of the people who were living there in that area, and in fact, its implications are still unknown to many today. Yes, the Romans had crucified more troublemakers a few days earlier, but that wasn't terribly unusual. The Romans were always doing that sort of thing. But one of these fellows happened to purport to have been a prophet, and I guess he didn't see this coming. Just another day. Like a million other mornings, just the same. For centuries, God, who created the world in love and for love, has heralded his unceasing affection for humanity. Everything God has done and will do is an expression of love. It cannot be any other because God is love. And is that not what the incarnation, the creation, all of this encompasses? It's a revelation of limitless love for the world. And this seemingly ordinary day, in a dusty corner of the world outside cosmopolitan centers such as Rome or Alexandria, the sin of humanity has bled into the ground outside of Jerusalem. The cross, a perfect and compelling display of divine mercy, yet... Without this morning, Easter morning, the third day, the Apostle Paul tells us that our faith has no relevance. If it's only Good Friday and no Easter, we are still in our sins. Christ's body on the cross was the document of humanity's guilt, of our brokenness. The resurrection is the receipt of our acquittal. Listen to this verse from the book of Acts, 17th chapter, 31st verse. God has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness. Okay, God's fixed the day. The world will be judged in righteousness by a man, Jesus, whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Think about that verse. God has fixed one day for the world to be judged. Jesus is the appointed one to do it. And he has given us assurance about that day by raising Jesus from the dead. Just another day, like a million other mornings, just the same? Hardly. This was not just any other day. You know what? As I was thinking about this, this is an aside. So, but it occurred to me that as I was preparing how differently the heavenly context unfolds 
in the occurrences of the incarnation and resurrection. Okay, these are two pretty big days for us as Christians, are they not? I mean, incarnation, Christmas Eve, this place is full just like it is now. Resurrection Day, it's full just like it is now. These are, these are our big days. If you remember when Jesus was born, the heavens couldn't contain themselves, right? The heavenly hosts erupt in joyous praise and celebration. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. But today, it's pretty subdued. No fanfare of the moment. The heavens aren't breaking forth with heavenly hosts who can't contain themselves. I would expect the heavenly version of the Tijuana brass to be out there. It's resurrection day. But that's not what we get today. I just thought that was interesting. March the 31st, 2024. We sit here this morning perhaps wondering if we dare believe and accept this sweet, sweeping proclamation about love and its triumph, this assurance that's been given to all by the raising of Jesus from the dead. Why should we believe it? There, the world is still filled with retribution, wickedness, suffering, despair, and death. And we desperately need to hear the good news, the announcement of a resurrection morning and the dynamic power of God's merciful love. I know morning after morning it might be easy to despair. Famine, pestilence, violence, all manner of incivility happening all around us, as it always has, I suspect. Hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, Horrific suffering, they didn't cease that morning in Jerusalem. Life, it seems, has pretty much gone on as it always has. It's just another day, like a million other mornings just the same. Except that it isn't. This morning, Easter is the global reminder that God treasures us. And that his life filled and life giving actions on that morning outside Jerusalem reached to the extent of all space and time. It is the announcement that good triumphs over evil and good reigns in this world and in this universe. Dare we believe it? Jesus says to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she says, if you've carried him away, just tell me where and I'll take care of it. And Jesus says to her, Mary. I love that. Jesus says to her, Mary. This morning, hear Jesus call you by name. Not in judgment, but in disarming affection like I suspect happened in that occasion. Mary. Easter is the clarion call of loving victory for humanity. The glorious resurrection of Christ for all, for his disciples, for his enemies, and yes, for the glorious Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. I am glad that you are here this morning. It's not just another day, like millions of other mornings just the same. No, today continues the encompassing salvation wrought by our Savior Jesus Christ. The resurrection is forgiveness in constant and eternal action. It will not cease. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He, he is risen indeed. It is accomplished for you. I invite you to stand together and affirm your faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and all who hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. We are uh, just delighted uh, that you are here to worship with us today. Hope that you have uh, a day of uh, being with family and friends ahead of you. Um, You heard David at the beginning. If you're visiting with us, we're particularly glad that you are here. Please let us know that you are. We would love to perhaps join you in your journey of faith. A few announcements. Please always check your bulletin, but immediately following this service, there is an egg hunt for the children It'll be back by the the playground behind the church, so if you go out this way and hang a right, you'll get there. Uh, And it's been separated into a couple of different uh, age groups so that the younger children have a chance in their uh, section. So uh, not all is lost. Um, A a load of thank yous today. Holy Week 
uh, would not be possible if it weren't for the incredible sacrifice and work of our altar guild, our flower guild, the choirs, our worship leaders, our limbs, our lectors, our ushers, the oblation bearers, greeters. We have bus drivers bringing the shuttle over today, egg hunt volunteers to help your children collect eggs. So thank you to everyone who has made uh, this week possible for us to enter into this most holy time and worship our Lord. And as we turn our attention to the sacrament, as you receive the bread and the wine today and you hear this story, uh, imagine the Lord calling your name in disarming affection. You are welcome once again at the table of the Lord.
Before we begin, if, if you are in need of gluten-free wafers, please go to your right, my left. They're normally on the other side. My, my left, your right. Now, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purposes, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us, he sent the Holy Spirit to his own, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity 
Guard its faith and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find your, our inheritance with St. George and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your in internal inheritance. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah.